Greetings and salutations. I'm overtired because it's currently 7:20 a.m. and I haven't gone to bed yet. I've quite I've been <laughs> I don't know. It's um been interesting, lads. I got to say we're on episode 26 just in case you're wondering. Um yeah, it's been interesting. I've been I played the last four episodes in one sort of bank. What I've decided to do now is is because it's really hard flicking between the Altrincham and then flicking between the Journeyman and then flicking to the stream and trying to remember all your team and what tactic each team's playing. So I thought if I do like a block, because, you know, normally it's like two, three episodes in a night of one save and then two, three episodes of the other the next night. So I have good playing sessions. So let's catch you up, boys. We've been playing the youth. As you can see, a bunch of these 15, 16 year olds, like Khan's played six games, averaging an uh, epic 6.56. He's really playing badly. Um, <laughs> but it's been fun. It's been quite random. And I've been playing about with tactics because we just kind of just, it didn't really matter. Mid table or halfway down bottom of mid table, doesn't really matter. It's the final game of the season. We're actually. In 12th now, is it almost a mid-table? We can't get mid-table today, unfortunately, officially mid-table. But still a very good season. The board are very, very happy with how we've done. Um, finances are looking good. 832 grand, a bit of money at the end of the season. It's going to be lovely. Let's take you through the results since uh, you were last with me. I told you I was going to do a... Um, Told you I was going to do a bunch of games because it didn't really matter unless it sort of started mattering. Um, I can't even remember. That was the last game, wasn't it? I can't even remember. It was a couple of hours ago. Hang on, I'm going to have to open the previous video up so I can work. <laughs> I'm old and it's I'm tired, all right? Greetings and oh. salutations, Hello, my friends. hello, Welcome how are you? What episode is it? Back to episode 25 okay, cool. Um, Come back let's not talk early. to myself, that's a, a bit weird. <clears throat> I'll Wait, so it was the Gainsborough Trinity Southport game. It was our last one. There, the one all. Right, sounds... I don't know, could be anyone. <laughs> but after that, right, this is... This is hilarious, right? Our first win in fucking ages. Boston United, top of the league. Top of the fucking league. We beat them. They were top of the league at the time. We destroyed their morale with our with our 3-2 win. We didn't deserve it whatsoever, but we won it. Lee Madison, the youngster. Carl McFarlane in an own goal with it. It was, it was bloody marvellous. It was bloody marvellous. And then we drew 0-0 with uh, FC United of Manchester, who are bottom of the league. Because, you know, why not? We, we are Liverpool. We beat top of the league, and then we... Okay, we lost in real life to Swansea, but we drew against them. Ah, oh, but at least they still... They got... Man United got relegated. I'm calling them Man United. I know they're not. Um, and then we lost to Staley Bridge Celtic 1-0. Boo. Then we drew with Kettering Town. Uh, Jake Malt getting the only goal for us. Then we lost to Leamington Spa 4-2. They're like a bogey team at the moment. Uh, Jake Malt's got two goals for us, bizarrely. Um, strikers haven't really been, the young strikers haven't really been banging them in. But this, my friends, this game, I'm going to show you now, was epic. We were 3 0 down after 54 minutes and we scored four goals. Lee Madison, the youngster, with a brace. Jack Finch, the sort of defensive midfielder, with one. And Carl McFarlane rounding off in the 70, 79th minute. And you know what? After I went 4 3 up, I continued going attacking I was like fuck it <laughs> I'm not gonna go defensive we all know how that went and then we beat Kings Lynn two wins on the trot we haven't done that since bloody January which is nice <laughs> uh, McFarlane and Jake Malt with the goal so today we're playing Alfreton Town we're just gonna bash through this and then we're gonna talk about what sort you know how the team's doing we are gonna play the youngsters. the defense is so bad I've changed the tactic I've gone more attacking if anything so I played with it being a bit more, trying to be a bit more solid, just playing fullbacks. And it wasn't doing me any good whatsoever. A lot of it down to the fact I'm playing with a bunch of kids. That sounds wrong. You know what I meant. So playing flat back four with wing back. No, it's not a flat back four. Why? Mm. Wing back attacks and two centre backs. Not only that, I'm playing offside trap and I'm pushing them much higher. Um, it was much higher. Promise. I promise. I might change that halfway. So... And we're playing with a sweeper keeper. Because, you know, back to the sweeper keeper. He likes it there. We're going, just try and score more than they do. We are playing with a defensive midfielder. 
um, is our only sort of support. But then we've got um, John on uh, Advanced Playmaker. He's had a decent season, right? But he's no Alistair Smith. He's no Alistair Smith. I've tried signing him again. He's still got his fail to get his work permit. It's just never going to happen. We've got the other youngster, Derbyshire, on this left-hand side. Malt is the veteran of the team. And then we've got the two youngsters, Madison, who's scored a few goals now. He's done all right for himself. Six goals in 16. It's not too bad at all. Um, six in 20 overall. But, you know, that's not too... One in three in the league. That's all right. Uh, Needham, however, none in seven. So... He's a he's a nun in seven man, you know that that popular phrase. Yeah, so uh, shorter passing, get stuck in, use offside trap, a much higher defensive line, low crosses because they're both quite small guys. So we're just uh, we start we're going attacking because why the fuck not is the answer. But some of the defending has been amazing in like a really horrific way, obviously, but amazing because it it. The some of the mistakes have just been quite epic to watch, like these youngsters. You know the the, the low the young loney centre back that I bought in. You know we needed a backup centre back, but also I bought him in mainly because I want to sign him on a free. I and I approached him. You saw him in the previous episode, and he's like, "No, I'm not interested." I approached him again a week ago, um, and uh, or before I approached him a week ago, I thought, you know what, he's not playing well. He's playing shit. I've played him in a few games. Oh. Uh, <laughs> everything's nervy at the back, lads. It's scary, scary times. Um, is that I thought, you know, I'll praise him, but I can't praise his form because he's awful at the moment. Everybody's playing awful. I don't really blame him. Um, but I'll praise his training, his conduct in training. I've said, look, you know, you're training really hard. And I said to him to that, that to him, and he was like, yeah, I know, thanks. And he reacted badly to it. Like, who reacts badly to saying well done in training? It makes no sense. Uh, but I did approach him, and he was interested in signing a contract, but he wanted 850 quid a week. And I like him, but that, ooh, that can't, none of our defenders are headers, by the way. Just can't, can't head a ball for shit. Um, it's like five aside, basically. Anything above there is, is out of play. Um, and so, yeah, I, I would like him, but I'm going to try when his contract runs out. They often ask for less um, at this level as they get a bit more panicky that they might be out of work. So we're going to try again, but um, I'm not optimistic for that one. Like, come on, boys. Let's have a good fight. If we can get three wins at the end of the season, it'll be quite remarkable with a bunch of kids. <clears throat> I'm quite enjoying it, though. I'm going to, even if it, you know, it's it, obviously it's not helping us, right? Madison is, you know, this was because we weren't going to get promoted anyway. We weren't going to get relegated. We might as well play the kids. But next year, I'm not going to go mad like this. But I want to give the kids plenty of game time, even if that hurts me a little bit. Because I, I'm really enjoying it. I haven't done it like... I've, I, I like to use lots of young players anyway and youth players. But really sort of focusing on that. I think I've, I'm really enjoying that aspect, even if it may take us a couple more seasons to get promoted or whatever it is. But, you know, they're dirt cheap. You don't have to pay these kids much, which is ideal. Um, one of them is on... Tw uh, I, he signed a pre-contract for £20 a week. <laughs> so we're really going to be making some money if, if they can replace some of the sort of fringy players. Oh... Uh... Is he our only defense? I've only realised we've got one defensive midfielder. Who would like to play defensive midfield? I'm going to pick you. You're a youngster. You're adaptable. It's fine. And then we can actually we'll go love it. Because he does. Right. Okay, boys. Come on. Let's get a three wins. So it's playing all right. But it's, you know, I think if we were playing with this tactic, playing our full team... You know, we picked up a couple more wins. So uh, I'm quite happy with how it's looking overall. I think once we use our first team, we've got a better chance next year. <clears throat> right, but I've, I've actually quite enjoyed it. When you accept that you're going to lose 90% of games and you can just sit back and enjoy the madness that is our defending and stuff like that, it's, it's been quite fun. It could be that I'm massively overtired and I need to go to bed and it's 7 a.m. in the morning. But <laughs> either way... I've enjoyed it. Go on, Madison, find him. Let him score his first goal of the season. Oh, he hit the other guys in the head. Oh, no, look at the pace. Look at this. Look at that centre-back. Look at the pace of that centre-back. Oh, that is amazing. How slow he was at getting back. <laughs> it's like watching John Terry. 
<laughs> like modern day John Terry. <laughs> Look at, look at this centre back here, the chase. They were pretty level, and he is just trudging through snow at this point. <laughs> well, the defenders had a, the goalkeepers had a shocker there, to be fair, but right. Oh, also, the chairman is retiring at the end of the season. I don't know what's happened. I, I imagine somebody else will just. Take control, like there'll be there'll be no like takeover or anything. I think somebody else will just take control. I wouldn't really want a big takeover to be honest. If there was like, a, I know it's very unlikely anyway, but if a, I wouldn't really want a sugar daddy to come into the team and just go, here's a million quid. Let's go professional. I'm quite enjoying it as it is. All right. Away. Yes, righty, what a catch. Right, come on, push forward. And I'm quite enjoying this kamikaze football in the fact we're playing so offensively with the back line, offside traps. And at this level, offside trap is really dangerous. My thinking, my logic behind it was that we're playing such attacking wing backs, there's only really two defenders. So it's easier for them to play offside. You, the left back's not going to play him onside by accident because the left back's. Fucking 40 yards ahead of everybody else. So that's my logic. That's my thinking. But at this level, offside trap is a dangerous game to play with hilarious consequences. Oh, look. One for the cameras, righty. Nice one. All right, we can still win this, boys. We've got goals in us. We've got late goals in us. The left back is done pretty solidly, to be fair. One of our, He was the touted as the, the biggest of the wonder kids that came through. And he's been doing an all right job, despite us being on pretty shit recently. Right, John. I keep looking. I I know it's wrong, but I keep looking at him, going, "He's no, he's no, he's no Alistair Smith," which is really bad, you know, because nobody's Alistair Smith. It was like when we had Connor up in the Journeyman last year, the left back, and we, um, it, I had to sell him. Did I even have to sell him because he a shit ton of money or something like that? And I spent seasons and seasons looking for this next world class left back. And everybody was like, oh, is he the next collar up? It was it was never the same. And maybe that's going to be the problem with Alistair Smith. <clears throat> the only problem with this whole youth thing. Oh, it's a good save to be fair. The only problem with this whole youth thing is that because we're, like I said before, because we're part time, they don't improve nowhere near as much as you'd hope. So we'll we'll play a few, but we'll we'll still sort of you know have a main team out. We'll maybe use those as the backups, as the subs, as the fringe players, unless they start doing well. Obviously, right? Let's freshen it up a little bit. Carl McFartlin. I <laughs> say because it's like fart, but it's lot and L and wisdom for Andrew Thomas. <clears throat> the experience has come on. Come on, lads, you've got ten minutes, lads. You, the good players have come on now. Okay, that was good. I enjoyed that corner. Okay, nothing's happened since the good players have come on. That's all right. <laughs> oh, it was right. It's all right. We had two wins in the last three. It's not too bad. Morale, that really did help dynamics. I did keep an eye on things like managerial support and the board just in case they started getting pissed off that we were losing games because then I would have, especially, you know, we don't want to get sacked. That would be awkward. Um, yeah, but I'm sure they would have liked to have won by a bigger margin that was predicted. At, okay, so they're a good team, then I take it. Is that a good result then? Okay, we're, we're saying X. Oh, I knew that was a mistake. Why are we saying X? It's 3 1. I don't care who it's against. 3 1's never. They're ninth in the league. <laughs> At home. Okay. Yeah, we shouldn't have said good job. That was not the way to finish the season, lads. That's not the way. <clears throat> I've got my eye on a few players that are contracts are running down. That if we can get in a couple. Yeah, strike lucky. They struck lucky. Finch is out for four weeks. Oh, well, he's. He's faking it for his summer holiday, I think it's fair to say. We'll have a quick look at the team of the season and talk about where we're looking to strengthen next season. Um, okay, player of the season. Um, none of my players. Bullshit. Bullshit. I reckon him. He was brilliant. That, that guy there that I clicked on. Excellent player. Had a really good season. Solid. If anything, there's room for improvement. Right. 
But we finished 13th. I'm okay with that. After it all started going a bit wrong, I was a bit more worried. Here we go. End of season rewards. Players in the best. McFarlane was into the best overall 11. He's on the subs bench. How's Paul? Has he got a team yet? Oh, he's playing for Binfield. About bloody right, mate. You wanted too much money on a non-contract. Oh, he's been to two clubs already. He's only scored one goal. Should have stayed. Should have, shouldn't have asked for so much money, should you, Paulie? Could get him back, I suppose. Could we offer, approach to sign him? Okay, he's not been there long. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Malt Sheridan and Smith. Ah, oh, Smith. Ah, oh, how I miss you, Smith. Never going to get over that. It could have been ours. End of season rewards. Hume, player of the season. We'll have a look at the top goal scorers. I think McFarlane got there, but only because he played more games than Hume in the end. Hume got rested for the last end, bit end of the season. McFarlane got second. Excellent. He's the key man. He's the key man. If he can start playing consistently, he's had a decent season, a better season, loads of assists as well. So not as many goals as you'd hope. I was looking for at least, you know, 18 to get that one in two, but... If he can start pulling it together on a regular basis, he could be the key man next season. Goal of the season was Jack Finch, really? What did he do? That was recent. Oh, it was the, the edge, just an edge of the area shot, was it? I think. Headed away. Takes a touch. Yeah, it's not, it's not the best goal I've ever seen in your life. Glenn Matthews was the signing of the season who's now in my under-23s because he was so shit. That says how bad my signings were um, because he won it. And young player of the season with Carmel Fart. 23's not a young player of the season is anymore. Come on now. All right. And the atmosphere is, is obviously the big thing that drops when you're on a bit of bad form, but the rest of it's fine. Um, oh, what do we say? Mid-table? Come on, guys. The boss is right. We can get a mid-table finish this time. Oh, fucking loving that. Oh, look how... How do you go for... <laughs> that makes no sense. There was nothing to say anybody disagreed. And then suddenly they've gone from, yeah, I'm pretty happy to, oh, my God, I'm the most upset person in the world. How is that? <laughs> it's all the young kids as well. Why are they all so upset? You've got your whole life ahead of you, lads. <clears throat> the board are very pleased. Injury report. Um, do, 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 do. At the end of the scale, you know, this is but almost injury free. Um, yearly training summary. This is always important, especially when you're using a youth. Look at this. This is lovely. We've got one player unhappy. I think that is Alex John. Yes, it is. A question for you experts. Um, whenever I give somebody additional focus. Whatever it is, whatever level I'm playing, and not just because this is part-time, but any team ever that I give somebody additional focus, they get unhappy with the high amount of extra training. Do you just generally ignore that and go, well, you know, tough shit? Even sometimes when I put that down to light, they still seem to... It's it's weird. Because um, I just wanted... To, if he's going to be a playmaker, he needs his, his passing to be better. Or just, I'm, I'm assuming you just ignore it. Just suck it up, you bitch. But let's have a look. So we've got John, um, additional focus passing, suggested. No, I want him to have that, for fuck's sake. But that's good that they've all impressed anyway and done well, all the youngsters. I don't know whether we should improve training. We're part-time, so more youth facilities, more training facilities aren't really going to help massively. I think we need to save our money. All right, 855 grand. Save our money and then go pros and get earlier and then we can worry about doing all the other shit like getting better training facilities for this level our training facilities are pretty good to be honest because we've already upgraded them if we look at the club here we've got below average training facilities basic youth facilities but at, at vanarama north level that's fine that's all good i did you know i um asked john hunt to re um reconsider his retirement but he's like no i'm not having it. he's only 32 i think he's just being lazy to be honest i think he's got another season in him Completely fine. Um, and I've kept okay, cool. Um, no, we don't want it. No, I'm not. I don't want to spend extra money that we don't. It's not gonna. Oh, it is youth though, isn't it? Do we? July. I'm worried that if we increase the youth level, that 
Well, why can't I? Didn't board meeting increase youth level? Well, I've already asked. That's what I want to do. Increase youth level. We believe the club is good enough for a club our size. I don't know how much money it's going to cost. If it's hundred grand, I'll take that because better youth players coming in would be great. I'd argue this is a we could. We can never be satisfied with. We should always be looking to improve and the best we could be. We believe our existing setup is more than adequate. No, you said it was it was fine for your level. So now you're just lying because now you're saying it's more than average. <clears throat> if we increase our activity and investment in this area, I will wholly commit to playing more young. He's, he's like, more young? You've been playing 15-year-olds. <laughs> um, come on, mate. You're about to retire. Just have a little. Go on. It sounds like a courage. Oh, fuck. A courage, we are prepared to go along with this request and look forward to seeing the long-term rewards of the first-team squad. We, you should be aware that failure to live up to the commitments you have made could result in the termination. You won't fuck it. I'm like a god. Um, the, okay, hammer don't cost too much, though. 100 grand, right? 100 grand. Um, but oh, I see, okay, it's just because because sometimes when you upgrade youth level, if your other thing is not high enough, they'll have to upgrade the youth facilities to get to that youth level. Thankfully, they didn't, so it shouldn't actually cost us any money. That's nice, though, boys. That's nice. That is pretty cool, right? Oh, yeah. Final thing. Final thing. Um, top goal scorer of the season was Carl McFarlane, twenty-two in forty-five. But as you can see, Hume's really got it. He he scored nineteen and he played. 13 less games. Um, Chris Speed, good first half of the season. Absolutely shit second half of the season. Like, real shit. Jake Malt, like I was saying before, another solid season, 10 goals. Uh, Lee Madison did well at the end there. Seven goals, three assists. Very happy with his performances. Um, one of the good things about Carmen Fallon as well, look how many key passes he makes. Compared to these other guys, you know, I know he's played more, but that's just over double what Chris Speed has got. Um, and then key headers, pretty similar level for the for the games played, I guess. One key tackle between the three strikers. Nice work, Lance. Um, but if we look at key passes as a whole, Alex John. You'd expect it because he is the playmaker. Um, but that's still good. Well done, mate. Um, Jake Malt and the right back as well. Key headers made. Obviously, you can be centre-backs here. John Hunt, seven, he's so far ahead of everybody else. We're really going to miss him. Yeah, we are really going to miss him. Because <clears throat> the other's like half as many. And he's still played a bunch of games. <clears throat> um, key tackles. John Hunt. Regan Upton actually did really well. But he's playing a bit of defensive midfield as well. So that skews it a little bit. If we look at um, assists. Marsden, our right back, when we were playing the wing wing back formations, he got 14 bloody assists, which is ridiculous. McFarlane with 12 assists, which is sensational. John with nine, which is all right. It's all right. It's one in four. It's okay. Uh, Jordan Hume with nine. Danny Wilson, the left back, only with five this season, but he did play uh, quite a bit less, I think. Yeah, sort of 14 games less. So I'm pretty happy with it. If we look and see where we can improve upon next season. Happy with the goalkeeper. He's decent. Right? He's decent for this level. He's still improving. He's only 21. He's getting better. Um, if we look at right back, completely happy with Marsden, as you'd expect. Um, we need to get in a backup right back, whether that's a Loney or a uh, just a sort of another youngster or something like that for the backup right back. Left back, I'm completely fine with another season of um, what's his face? Danny Wisdom and Andrew Thomas. I'm completely fine with him being the backup. Um, he has dropped a four-star potential, which is a little bit annoying. Um, it just looks sad now, doesn't it? It just looks like he's not worth developing. But he, he is very good. So he can be he's, he's good enough as backup. Um, Centre-back options is where we're going to strengthen. We've got the two youngsters, neither of which are really ready for first-team football at all. We've got um, Havern's run out of contract. John Hunt's retiring. He's going back. So we've got these two guys, both of which can play centre-back pretty fine. But if I'm playing a DM, they're going to play there as well. So centre-backs is going to be key to next season, I think. In the midfield, we've still got um, Sam Sheridan, Jake Malt, Harry Lovett. I think they're all staying. Alex John is fine. Ian Derbyshire is a decent backup. He's played a few games now. He's improving massively. So that's really nice. That's much quicker improvement than somebody like Alex John. That's very, very good. I like it. I like it. What's his 
Yeah, he's fairly determined. He's like, are you determined? Yeah, good bit. Um, and then if we want to play advanced playmakers, actually in attacking midfield position as a number 10, um, it has to be John or Derbyshire, which is okay, but um, that's a little bit weak there. And then uh, um, up front <clears throat> is interesting. We've got McFarlane. We've got Hume. And he's been brilliant. I keep sort of thinking he's going to end, you know, he's going to start degrading. But he's, look, you know, he's had the, one of the best ratings of the season. I think the best of all the entire team. So he's still going to be first choice next season um, with McFarlane. Chris Speed really disappointed. So I will be on the lookout for another striker. And I might get, I'll probably just get rid of Tom Pierce. I've just not, I've just not fancied him. He's decent. Just not doing it for me. Maybe with more game time, he might come good. And then we've got Lee Madison, who is not... Oh, actually, I might just play Lee Madison. He's really improving. Which is... Fruity! Like, he's really improving really nicely. He's concentrating his dog turd. Concentrate! <laughs> Pretty butterflies! Um... I'd have him as a rotational option, like like the fourth choice striker if we're playing three up top. Um, but yeah, so the biggest thing is centre backs. We need three solid first teamers in centre backs that we can rotate. That is that is goal number one. We saw from how many goals, especially the second half of the season. Admittedly, a lot of them were the kids, but even before the kids arrived, we just started conceding three, three, two, five, four, five. <laughs> that is fucking shocking. What's our goal? What's our goal difference? <laughs> um, one, one, which is amazing in itself. It shows how many goals we scored because that to have that many. Is, is pretty spectacular. Um, 69 goals. <laughs> Hello, ladies. Um, that is quite bad. And we were so good. Like I said, halfway through the season, our goalkeeper was just about to break the record for most clean sheets in a season. And never beat it. <laughs> I don't think because we... We might have. He might have. He's like two games off. He, did we, no, we still didn't keep a clean... We kept one clean sheet. <laughs> I think he needed another one. He must be so annoyed. Right. There we go, my friends. Hope you enjoyed this season. I certainly did. It was a fun one. We didn't get promoted, but it was always an outside shot. I think we did well with the youth. We've developed a couple of, especially a couple of those youngsters have really started to develop nicely. Let me know what you think. I think the biggest question that's come from this, do you think Madison is ready to just be the, you know, one of the three strikers? He's not far off. He is not far off at all. He's only 17. We'll give him a new contract as soon as we can. He's only on 50 quid a week. <laughs> right. Definitely ending up now. Thank you very much. If you enjoyed this season, please do leave a like. Share this video with your friends. If, anytime you can do that, it really does help me out. Gets new viewers in and stuff like that. Builds the community. So thank you very much if you do that already. I love you all very much. And I'll see you next season. Bye-bye. I'm off to bed because I'm fucking shattered. But I enjoyed that.